Okay, now let's look at section 1-5, measuring segments. And in this section, we're going to be doing a little bit of algebra, too. Um, some vocab to get started. Coordinate is the value of the point. So on your number line, you'll see we have point A. Point A has a value of negative 2, so negative 2 is its coordinate. Congruent segments are two segments with the same length. And remember, we use the equal sign with the squiggly on top to mean congruence. So line segment AB is 2 inches. Line segment CD is 2 inches. They're equal in length. Therefore, the two segments are congruent. And finally, a midpoint is a point that divides a segment in two congruent segments. So looking at the diagram, we see segment PQ is congruent to segment RQ, and therefore Q is the midpoint of line segment PR. The ruler postulate says the points of a line can be put into a one-to-one -one correspondence with the real numbers so that the distance between any two points is the absolute value of the difference of the corresponding numbers. Um, so that means on our number line, if we wanted to find the length of x, y, we could take the absolute value of coordinate of x's coordinate, which is negative 7, minus y's coordinate, which is 2, we would get absolute value of negative 9 or 9. Now remember, distance is always positive, so the length of xy is 9. Another way we could do this is just count on our number line. Like in number 2, if I wanted to find the length of yz, I could start at y and I move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces. So my length is 6. Or mathematically, we could take absolute value of 2 minus 8 and we get 6. And finally, the length of xz would be absolute value of negative 7 minus 8 or 15. The segment addition postulate says if three points A, B, and C are collinear, so remember they're on the same line, and B is between A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. So in other words, we can add the two parts up and it will give us the whole line segment. And looking at two examples of this, in number four, we have line segment AC. We know segment AB is 2x minus 6, and segment BC is x plus 7, and we know the whole line segment AC is 25. So using the postulate right above, I can set up an equation. I can say 2x minus 6, plus x plus 7, whoops, there we go, uh, plus 7 equals 25, right? Because isn't AB plus BC equal to AC? If we add the two parts up, we'll get the whole line segment. So then we have to bring back our algebra skills. So we combine like terms. I subtract 1 and get 3x equals 24, divide, and x equals 8. Okay, and all it said was to find x, so we don't have to plug that back in to get the lengths of any of the line segments. Uh, same idea number 5. Um, so if you want to hit pause, maybe try this one on your own, and then check your answer. That might be a good idea. Um, but here we can say line segment EL plus segment LK will give us the whole line segment EK. So 4x minus 20 plus 60 equals 7x minus 5. Uh, so now we have an equation with variables on both sides. I'm going to combine my like terms first. Um, bring my, I'm going to subtract 4x, so I'm going to bring it to the right. And I'm going to add 5. And if I divide by 3, I get 15 equals x. 
or x equals 15, depending upon which way you solved that. Okay, last examples uh, for this lesson. Let's look at some midpoint examples. In number six, it says B is the midpoint of, a, of line segment AC. We want to find the length of AC. So remember we said a midpoint cuts our line segment into two congruent parts. So I know that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. And I can denote that with the hash marks. So my equation this time is going to be 5x plus 9 equals 8x minus 30. Six. Okay, and then again solving the equation with variables on both sides. So if I subtract 5x, 9 equals 3x minus 36, and then I'm going to add 36, and I get 45 equals 3x, divide by 3, so 15 is x. Then if we go back to the directions, it said find the length of AC. Um, so I could plug it in to the whole thing, or I could take one of my line segments and then just double it. So then here, if I take, I'm going to find the length of AB, because AB will be 5 times 15 plus 9. So I get that AB is 84, which means AC will be twice that length, or 168. Okay. Let's look at number seven. It says, why is the midpoint of line segment XZ? We're going to find the length of XY, YZ, and XZ. So again, midpoint means these two segments are congruent. So our equation will be 2x plus 1 equals 3x minus 4. All right, let's get x on one side. So I'm going to subtract 2x, add 4, I get x is 5. All right, so then if I plug in, I'm going to choose, we'll find the length of xy. So 2 times 5 plus 1 is 11. So since y is the midpoint, that tells me yz is also 11, and that the whole line segment xz will be 11 plus 11, or 22. Okay, number 8. z is the midpoint of ab and AB is 35, find AZ. If you want, you can draw a line segment. That might help to visualize it. So we have AB, Z is the midpoint, the whole line segment's 35. Since it's the midpoint, these two are congruent. If I wanna find AZ, I'll just take half of the total line segment because they will be two congruent parts. So AZ is 17.5. All right, finally, um, same idea. It says Q is the midpoint of PR. PQ is 6X plus 1. PR is 13X minus 2. We want to find QR. So again, if you want, you can draw a line segment. So we have P, R, Q as our midpoint, P, Q is 6X plus 1, and P, R, the entire line segment, 13X minus 2. So I'm not told what Q, R is, however, since Q is the midpoint, I know these two are congruent which means if PQ is 6x plus 1, then QR is also 6x plus 1. So if I want to make an equation, I can say, well, I have two 6x plus 1s, and that has to equal the entire line segment of 13x minus 2. So if we distribute...
and I'm going to subtract 12x, add 2, I get x equals 4, and the question said to find QR. So let's see, QR, go a small here on room, well QR is the same as PQ, so that's going to be 6 times 4 plus 1, or 25.